Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I will be showing you all the ups and downs left and right of Medieval 2 Total War. So when I first got started with this game, it was a bit complicated for me. But I hope this tutorial helps any newbies with the game. Let's open this up. Now if you have the Total War mod installed or DLC, you'll be presented with these options. You can pick one. This is, of course, in America, Britain, Crusades, Teutonic, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to play the native game. Alright, they're just going to show you the ad. Well, you know, other stuff, display, info. No, I'm not capturing the outer right now. So you're you're not going to catch any of this. The only input is going to be from my headphones. And they aren't loud, so this is going to be silent. So they're going to show you this cutscene, or that stuff. Now... If you are going to play the tutorial, that does kind of show you all this stuff, but at the same time, it, it, it doesn't really give you the full array of options you can actually pick in the game. So, this I haven't actually found a way to skip this cutscene. Every single time they play this cutscene, and it's so annoying, but I just kind of handle it. So I'm going to play a bit um so anybody th this tutorial by the way is for people who are real new just got the game because i know this game isn't the most popular thing but i know anybody who's new at the game it's a lot to handle um there's a lot of options and, and it's pretty difficult to get started but it's a lot of fun once you do understand what's happening. Smoothly. All right. Now we have obviously multiplayer load game, all that kind of stuff. We're going to do, you know, there's tutorial. You should definitely play that either before or after watching this. That kind of gives you some of the combat basics. But if you don't really want to, I'm going to show you it anyways. Um, they have quick battle, historical battles. I'm just going to get into a custom battle real quick. I'm going to go all periods, medium difficulty, all this stuff can say the same. No time limit, nothing. And I get to pick a map. I'm just going to pick ours off. That's pretty all right map. Now over here we have our budgets. Um, so you can change these all you want. You know, I can make mine. Uh, what is that? A million? I can make mine a million. I can make theirs five. Uh, I'm just gonna make both of ours max. And I'll, it doesn't really matter what troops we pick. So we have, you know, all these troops. Now, this doesn't matter much for the grand campaign. Um, so I'm just gonna do a few. Arm swordsman. Uh, I'm gonna make these some good troops. You know, a lot of you know some archers. You know, oh crap! Right click to delete them. Um, get a couple more of these guys, and I'll take some knights templar. They're pretty powerful. Um. What else? And you know what? I'm gonna take two ballistas. 
because why not? And for friends, uh, I'm pretty much going to do the something very similar. Um, anything really. Uh, crap, you know what? Doesn't really matter, does it? You know, just a random cannon. So, I don't know if I'm gonna win. Um, I know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm not saying I'm an expert, but I'm pretty tuned to the combat mechanics. Uh, you can mess with these upgrades if you want. Doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm just gonna get right into it. So right away, you're gonna be deployed with a screen up. If you wait a bit, you, your general is gonna, you know, have a little rant, a little speech. <laughs> And then you're gonna, when you press the start deployment button, you're gonna be presented with this part of the game. Now, this is basically where you get to rearrange your troops. So, if I want, let's say, my armored swordsman over here, boom, move him over here. Now, to change their formation, or actually, you know what? To move their troops, move the troops, I left click the group. Or I can also left click the group down in the bottom of the screen. So if I want to click the feudal, the Knights Templar, I can click them down here or right here. And to move them in the deployment screen, the simple right click. Now to move around, you can use WASD or you can drag your mouse to a part of the screen. And now change um, your position. If you want to change your camera view, it's Q and E. Now, if you want to change the formation of each of your troop units, so if I don't want my armor swordsman like this, I can hold right click where I want them to go and drag, and I can make them, and I can make them like that, or I can make them real stretched out like that. So for now, I'm just gonna gonna keep them like they were before, roughly. Now, they'll automatically put the longbowmen and the archers in the front. Once the enemy starts charging close, you'll have to move these guys, your infantry, to the front. And you can also have the nice Templar charge, whatever you want. Now, to s or, my bad. on the bottom left of the screen, you'll see a pause menu. Now, this pause menu um, pauses the battle so you can make quick changes or anything. This button right here speeds up the battle, slows down the battle. This is the time limit, but since there's no time limit, that doesn't matter right now. And right here, if you hover your mouse over it, it'll tell you percentage of allies killed and percentage of enemies killed. We'll also have a little um, phrase there telling you, you know, only full clues you know, this is an easy battle or defeat a certain, whatever's happening. Now over here we have a menu of run age if we want them to walk. Um, they'll have one bar and we can just click where we want them to mark. We can double click to have them run or we can press age or click this button. Right now I'm going to just keep them there. Or right, not, just stop. You can press this button to stop any orders like attack or for the archer's fire. If you're trying to move, you can press them to stop. This applies for all the units. Each unit has their special ability. For example, the longbowmen, the archers have flaming arrows. Uh, you can disable fire at will mode and you can disable skirmish mode. Uh, these guys, uh, let's say if you're in a line and they have the horses charging and you forgot to change your formation you can pause it press guard mode and a lot less you the men will die because they'll be guarded um because a cavalry charge is more than certain to take out a good amount of your infantrymen excuse me so just be aware of that now in the back here we have our ballistas, you know, catapults, ballistas, cannons will always be back here and way in the back is going to be an armed swordsman. This is where our general is. 
If your general dies, it's a lot of chaos. If there's a white flag on the troop unit square, if there's a white flag on troop unit square, that means they're retreating. Either the generals died, they've lost morale, or they've lost too many men and they're running. So let's uh, get into the battle. This map right here where my mouse is hovering over on the bottom left kind of shows the map layout and where all the units are. Green for good guys, red for bad. And the archers are going to fire automatically because fire at will mode is on. And these charging, what are they? These are scarf scarred. So they're going to fire back too and... Right now it's just going to be an archer war. Now for larger battles like this, this is going to go on for a second. Um, guys are pretty evenly matched. Now one thing I cannot stress enough in this game is that archers and missile troops are so incredibly important. If you discard them, like I feel a lot of people do, and I see a lot of people do it in a lot of these games, you're, you you will have no success. So, 3% of my team has been killed, and 4% of them have been killed. So they're just going to keep firing back and forth. And one of the important things is you always have to be aware where your um, general is, because again, if he dies, there's a lot of chaos that ensues. So they're just kind of firing at each other right now. You know, back and forth, back and forth. I'm not, you know, I don't care if I lose or win. This is just basic understanding of the controls. So again, we've killed a bit more of them. Um, basically, once a good amount of both sides have been killed, uh, I want them to make the first move, really. Actually, you know what? I don't know why I haven't done this before. I'm going to take my ballistas. I'm going to fire at these Scots guards. And they'll take a second now. Load. I'll load up. I don't know why the guys on the left aren't firing. These guys are gonna aim and they're gonna twist the thing back. Just in. I'll have them shoot further back then. And then, you know, they'll have to move up a bit. Doesn't matter, really matter much to me. So at this point, we're dying a lot. So you know what? I think I'm gonna make the first move. I'm gonna move this guy back, and I'm gonna hold down my left mouse. And what this will do, it will select any troop units inside of this white bar. Now most of my archers are selected. You know what? I can go at this angle and I can just drag up and boom so I'm gonna bring these guys back here hold right click hold right mouse and drag and they'll be in that formation I'll ask them to run again we've gone over this this is just uh, it being used oh, okay let's change angles select my infantry Move them up. About all right. We have them run. And then what am I actually gonna do? I'm gonna ask these guys to go in a loose formation. And I'm gonna be ready to have my Knights Templar charge.
we'll see what it see sometimes this game is not great at this. Come on. Tree. You're gonna move up. Come on. Move it up. Move it up. Move it up here. Yeah. I might mess something up. Whatever. So part of the battle I like, I'm gonna have these guys just charge in. Again, not too much. If I was in an actual grand campaign battle, I'd think a bit more about this. I'd pick my battles better. I'd also be more considerate about the troops I sent in, but just for this example, I'm gonna have a general charge evenly. I'm gonna have them at the Scots Missile so they'll. Oops. So they'll meet. Now what I'm doing right now is when I hover over the, over the enemy, whether they're, if they're a missile, the bow icon is going to show up, or if they're me, like the sword, it's going to show up. And it's going to hover over the enemy, and that's basically saying, do you want to attack them? And if you want to, right click, just like you're going to move them. Again, double right click if you want to move quickly. <clears throat> right down here is loose formation. Um, doesn't really matter to me, actually. Uh, yeah, they're just gonna charge. What I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna have my Knights Templar charge these mounted sergeants in the back and see if they can penetrate the line and take out a good amount of their forces before they take out too many of mine. Because there aren't many Scots Guards and they're probably gonna retreat. So I'm just trying to break into some more melee and trying to take out a large amount of them before they can me. I'll have these guys, the ballistas, fire towards the back. And I'll have my bodyguard go there. Now everyone's in motion and I'll press play and watch the magic happen. Now I was hoping, because before I'll send them through the infantry to a loose formation, yep, the knights are very easily able to push through infantry, and it doesn't look like these guys have enough time to retreat. So my, my, <laughs> my cavalry are just gonna mow through them completely taking out all of their um range units now this is not an even matchup i don't remember putting these guys together so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna send an english support group over there And you can definitely see things have evened up a bit from before. So, armor surgeons, after all these frontline troops got beat up, the armor surgeons don't really know what to do. So I'm just going to have them do a general charge on the dismounted knights. Same thing with these guys. And these guys are caught up in combat over here. Uh, let's see, they're caught up in Scots Guards. So, let's see if I'm able to find any reinforcements. I could. Um, you know what? I'm gonna have these two units fire on these guys. Now, I. It's risky to have uh, range troops fire on troops, your infantry, and cavalry are facing because there's always the risk of shooting the wrong guys but that's a pretty easy tar oh no they've moved and they've moved okay i'm gonna have them just fire back here up here then that seems all right uh i just want to take them out they're pretty formidable 
Uh, what do we got here? Oh, man. Okay, no, you can move up. <laughs> Heavy infantry. You can help these guys. Uh, how are you doing? Whoever has just selected. Who did I just select? The arrow on the screen is going to point to the uh, unit you selected. Alright, I'm going to have you guys support the these guys over here. Now you can see the white flag right here. These guys are pretty shook to the core. I don't know why maybe the combat was too tough for them. So right now, that wasn't a great charge. I just kind of threw everybody in without really thinking. And I lost a lot of my cavalry. Now, over here, we have some of my cavalry and Scott's guard. So they were over there doing their stuff. These guys right over here, the swordsmen, they're still fighting pretty strong. So I'm actually going to send my, um, my general in. Because I don't really have any other men to send in at the time, at the moment right now, which is kind of unfortunate. I don't know why these guys ran, uh. Yeah, I'll rally my troops, kind of bring the morale up. Just kind of... Hope I can do something. It's it's very odd that these guys retreated so quick. I, that usually doesn't happen. Um, so I'm just going to hope that these guys are going to be able to seal the deal. Um, yeah, this is starting to, uh, not look good. So, you know, at this point, the battle's n not looking great. Um... The troops I have left are in disarray. Um, my ballista are being completely wiped. These guys look like they are back in order. I'm going to have these guys guard themselves. Have these guys guard themselves. Our general has been killed again. That's all right, but that means most of my guys are gonna retreat. So this bat, this battle is basically lost. Um, stuff I should have done better. Probably shouldn't have waited too long. Um, so I'm just gonna exit the battle. Um. If I could have done better, probably could have had a better charge with the um, cavalry. I just kind of threw random people in. But that's basic controls of combat. Next is the Grand Campaign. Now, the Grand Campaign, you can pick any of five factions England, France, Holy Roman Empire, Spain, and Venice. Each year, they tell you the strengths and weaknesses of their military and their strongest troop. Not just for the sake of anything. I'm going to show you. I'm going to pick England because they're a good example to show you everything you need to know. And they're going to play a cutscene here. Again, I don't know how to skip this. So, Britain has water, they have land, um, right now I'm really just working in the Britannic, um, module, cause that's pretty fun, um,
so I understand that I didn't really sell she sieges or anything, and I'm not really going to do that because that's pretty easy to find out by yourself. Everything is really the same. You just have to build siege equipment, bring them to the walls, bring them to whatever place they match to, bring down the wall, place the ladders, place the siege equipment, bust through the doors, whatever it is. See that, you know, those troops are going to bust through the doors in the cutscene. And, um... Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty simple that, um, also, I cannot stress how important, um, ranged troops, you know, archers, crossbowmen, those little troops, are in sieges, um, it's also very useful to have catapults in sieges, not only can they take down walls, but they can take down a lot of troops, um, mostly on top of the walls. They have trouble shooting over the walls, but I find in sieges without high wall castle walls, they'll be this fine, but then again, without high castle walls, usually pretty easy to defeat. Now, every faction starts out with a default enemy, and those are the rebels. There are rebels all over the map. For example, York, rebel encampment. Uh, you can take over the rebels or do whatever you want. You start with default armies and armies in your cities. You have priests, you can send them around to um defeat heretics. They have better relations with the Pope. We have our fleet. Now our fleet can go into land and pick up these units and bring them across the water. For example let see if I can. Now to zoom in and out and to move across. WA stays moved. To zoom in is mouse wheel. Now I'm going to bring these guys right here. It's a little tough in London. These guys are going to board the boat. The fleet is going to move over here on land. And now King William the Conqueror is now capable of taking bridges because he just crossed the sea from the fleet. You can also get the naval battles, but you have to simulate those. And princesses, they can marry into other families, um, other kingdoms too, or they can do with diplomatic stuff. Um, diplomat, it's a diplomat. Now merchants, you will find these little things like dyes and and um, wool. And textiles around the map. Just go to them. Left click or them. Left click, and they. And, uh, uh, maybe if you select a merchant, hover over them. It's five florins per per turn, so it's very little florins, but it's something. So down to the right here. Is faction zones. You can find anything about your factions in there. Unless say I'm in a town, you have to have a general or somebody in here to make changes to the town and recruit troops. You can head to this menu and train troops. Now, each troops take turns, a turn to um, make. So in your next turn, these troops will all be trained. Um, these um, affect the production of food or the production of troops and how many or how fast you can make or the different kind of troops. Let's say if you make a ballista maker, you can now make ballistas. Um, so these guys usually never take one turn. Um, they usually take a couple or something. And you can also convert them into a city, whatever you want to do. You can also convert them down. And that's the basic for city building. Now this is your money down here on the right and your financial um, menu. So in each town there are agents. Uh, that one there isn't. Um, you usually get some default agents. Well, agents are, let's say, like right here, a spy. Right here you can hover over and it says chance of success for percent. That's the chance of success, success of you spying on them. So if he fails, he dies. See, he died. 
Now, if he would have succeeded, I would have known their garrison, and he would have had a chance of opening their gates during a raid. And that unfortunately didn't happen by agents or like princesses, diplomats, spies, basically non-military troops. So that's the pretty much basics. Um, down here is your menu mi or missions list. All the statistics. Uh, college of Cardinals. Um, the English faction. So that's ours. And this is a family tree. This just kind of shows the statistics, all the factions, as term progresses, these lines will move around, of course. Now, over here, this shows our uh, mentor generals, forces, all that stuff. Now, we go over here, Pope. This shows our relationships with the Pope. You want to, you know, definitely get this high because then the Pope will support you. And you can request a crusade. This is diplomacy and all that stuff. So when you're ready, once you've attacked all your villages and done this and that, I'm going to show you this real quick. Depending on what it is, you have the option to build a siege tower, ladder, or ram, or multiple, or all of them. Now, in each uh, turn, you have siege points, and you can use them um, to build these. And time to build cute items will take two turns, so I'm going to maintain them. And in two turns, those will be ready, and I'll be able to uh, siege Brutus. So once I'm done with my turn, once I've done all the diplomatic stuff and gone to all, you know, to deal with my merchants and stuff and spies, I'll click end turn, and then you can, can click through all these cutscenes and such. And I'm going to simulate this battle. Um, so King William. Let's be it off. It doesn't really matter to me. This is a, a mission. If I take York, I'll be rewarded with 2,500 um, florins for York. Whatever. So that's the basic. Um, you can attack other factions, do diplomatic relations with other factions. Let me see. So we have stuff like, you know, make an offer for an alliance. Drags and trade right, you know. Um, on here shows you, you know, how generous they are. And this is very generous, I know, of course, but I can make it very demanding if I request 10 or you know, I can 10,000 forms. They won't accept that. You know, whatever. So those are the basics just to get you started. Um, you know, all the menus and stuff down here. Crewman reports this shows who's been, who's been recruited. So, yeah. Those are the basics, and I hope this helped anybody get in started with the game. Um, I'm just going to quit. I don't need to save. So, those are the basics for the game. Thank you for watching. See ya.